One of the greatest achievements of the human beings, is the ability to fly. The astonishing piece of engineering which made it possible, is the aircraft gas turbine engines. It is so advanced and complex, that only few companies in the world can produce them. In this video, we will see, how the aircraft engines generate thrust, and make us fly to our destinations. The aircraft's gas turbine engines are the components, which produce thrust force, moving the aircraft forward. For producing the thrust force, the engine needs air and burn the fuel, like any other engine. But the way air is taken inside, and the components used for producing thrust, are different than an automobile's engine, and are highly complex and are manufactured with great precision. The basic components of a gas turbine engine, are the compressors. Combustion chamber. Turbine. And a nozzle. The air is sucked inside the engine, from the atmosphere, due to the low pressure created by the compressors, in front of the engine. The air gets compressed, that is, its pressure is increased, by the compressor. The compressors, are usually made into different stages, like, low pressure compressor stages, and the high pressure compressor stages. This high pressure air from the compressor, enters the combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber, the aviation fuel is injected and mixes with the, high pressure air from the compressor. Igniters will be present around the combustion chamber, which produces spark and ignite the air and fuel mixture. This burning of the fuel, produces enormous amount of heat. This energy produced by combustion, will now be available for doing work. This combustion process looks simple, but the air-fuel ratio and the combustion temperature, requires greater control, as it affects the engine efficiency and pollutants, or emissions produced due to combustion. The hot air from the combustion chamber, enters the turbine stages. The turbine blades are designed such that, when the hot air from the combustion chamber hit the blades, the turbine blades and rotors will rotate, thus producing work. This way, the high energy, hot air from the combustion chamber, produces turbine work, using its energy. Since, the energy of the air is used for producing turbine work, the energy of the air decreases and the temperature of the air also decreases, as it passes through the turbine stages. The air from the turbine stages, still have energy within it. This air enters the nozzle of the engine. The nozzle is designed such that, the energy of the entering air, is converted into kinetic energy of the air, that is, the nozzle increases the velocity of the entering air. The air enters with high energy in low velocity, and leaves the nozzle, with low energy in high velocity, into the atmosphere. This is the complete cycle of the aircraft's gas turbine engine. Hmm, you would have got few questions in your mind, after knowing this cycle. Why the velocity of the air is increased in the nozzle? What happened to the work produced in the turbine stages? The answers to these questions, is where the real physics comes into picture. Let's understand it. For understanding how thrust force is produced, we need the help of Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law states, a force applied on a body, causes a change in momentum of the body. And what is momentum? It is the product of mass times velocity of the body. Now, we can express Newton's second law as F equals mass times velocity final, minus, mass times velocity initial. Now, consider the air flowing through the engine. Before entering the engine, air is having very low momentum, consider it mass times velocity initial, now once the air enters the engine, and reaches the nozzle, the nozzle increases the velocity of the air, thus increasing the exit or final momentum of the air. By Newton's second law, this change in momentum means, a force has been applied on the air and it has changed its momentum. This force applied on the air, is given by, F equals mass times velocity final minus, mass times velocity initial. Now we know, that force is applied on the air entering the engine and the direction of applied force is in the direction of flow of air, or we can say in the direction of increase of momentum. Now, the famous and well-known, Newton's third law of motion comes into picture. 
This air, which experiences the force, will apply an equal and opposite force on the engine. This opposite force acts in the opposite direction of air flow or in the forward direction. This is the thrust force propelling the aircraft forward. This is the reason for increasing the air velocity for producing thrust. This thrust force is called the momentum thrust. The thrust force can be increased by increasing the velocity of air flow, which we have seen now. Thrust can also be increased by increasing the mass flow rate m. But for this engine design should be modified to accommodate greater mass flow of air. This is the principle behind the turbofan engine, which we will understand in another video. The turbine work produced by the hot combustion air is utilized for running the compressors in the front. The compressors and turbines are attached on the same shaft. Thus, when the turbine rotates due to the hot air, the compressor also rotates with the same RPM. Thus, the work produced by the turbine is used for rotating the compressors and increasing the air pressure for combustion. This cycle continues and thrust is produced continuously during the flight. We will see in our future videos about the types of aircraft engines, materials used in the engines, and in detail about the turbofan engines.